While love was being spread across the world on Valentine's Day, some people decided to spray bullets at the Chiefs Super Bowl parade. And now, Game Gaze Hub is going to take a look at the Chiefs Super Bowl parade highlights, the fun, the cheers, and the tears. We're also going to visit the past to uncover the history of shootings in U.S. sports. But first, what really happened? It all began on the 11th of February, when the Kansas City Chiefs won their second consecutive Super Bowl title by defeating the San Francisco 49ers 31-20. The Chiefs, led by their star quarterback Patrick Mahomes, became the first team to win back-to-back -back Super Bowls since the New England Patriots in 2004 and 2005. The Chiefs fans were ecstatic and eager to celebrate their team's historic achievement. And so, three days later, on Valentine's Day, the Chiefs held a victory parade and rally in downtown Kansas City, Missouri, in a feast of fame and fortune. Hundreds of thousands of fans clad in Red Chiefs gear packed the streets and the park in front of Union Station, where the rally was held. The atmosphere was festive and joyful as the players, coaches, and officials took turns to address the crowd and thank them for their support. The fans cheered, chanted, and waved their flags and banners, oblivious of the danger lurking at the corners of the parade grounds. I mean, that's, that's what happens with guns. Just as the Kansas City Chiefs wrapped up their celebration rally, the event transformed into a fight for life. An avalanche of stray bullets, with the fans struggling to not stand in the way of gunshots that rang across the auditorium. This occurred towards the end of the rally, around 4.30 p.m. local time. The Kansas City Police say the shooting stemmed from a dispute between several people who were not related to the parade or the rally. They also recovered several firearms and detained two juveniles who were suspected to be involved in the shooting. They then said they were looking for others who may have been involved and asked for witnesses, victims, and people with cell phone video of the violence to call a dedicated hotline. This grave shooting left one dead and 22 injured. Victims ranged from 8 to 47 years old, with half under 16 right here and then it went like that. The only deceased of them was a lady identified as Lisa Lopez Galvin, a Kansas City area radio DJ who hosted a show called Taste of Tejano on KKFI Radio 90.1 FM. She was the sister of Lee Summit Mayor Pro Tem Beto Lopez and her nieces and nephew were among those injured in the shooting. Initial shock and uh, it feels like a bad dream. The radio station and the mayor expressed their sadness and condolences for her loss. The shooting also shocked and saddened the Chiefs players, who had just finished celebrating their Super Bowl win. Patrick Mahomes, who was named the Super Bowl MVP for the second time, tweeted that he was praying for the victims and their families. He also urged the leaders to enact real solutions to prevent gun violence. Other players such as safety Justin Reed, tight end Travis Kelsey, and wide receiver Tyreek Hill also expressed their sympathy and prayers for the victims on social media. This Super Bowl parade shooting is incredibly sad and all, but did you know this is not the first time that a sports celebration turned violent in the U.S.? Matter of fact, there have been many other incidents of gun violence that have occurred either during or after a sporting event involving players, fans, or bystanders. In fact, the Kansas City mass incident is reported as the 50th so far in 2024, according to a gun violence awareness group. Now, let's take a look at the history of some major shooting events in U.S. sport. In 2010, a 22-year-old man was killed and three others were wounded in a drive-by shooting near Staples Center in Los Angeles after the Lakers won their 16th NBA title, but CNN reporters said he fell to death. In 2014, a 19-year-old man was shot and killed and three others were injured in a shooting near AT&T Park in San Francisco after the Giants won their third World Series title in five years. In 2019, four people were shot and wounded and three others were arrested in a shooting near Nathan Phillips Square in Toronto during the Raptors NBA Championship Parade. Tennis star Monica Seles was stabbed in the back by a deranged fan of her rival Steffi Graf during a match in Hamburg, Germany in 1993. The attack left Seles with physical and psychological scars and she was unable to play for over two years. She eventually returned to the court but never regained her dominance in the sport. The tennis star incident was still healing out with time when another one struck six years later. In 1999, Denver Broncos linebacker Darren Williams was shot and killed in a drive-by shooting after leaving a New Year's Eve party at a nightclub. The shooting was allegedly sparked by an altercation between Williams' group and some gang members inside the club. The gunman, Willie Clark, was convicted of first-degree murder and sentenced to life in prison without parole. We've seen sports-related violence happening in all sports, but this next one did hit quite below the belt. It was in 2002 when former NBA player Jason Williams accidentally shot and killed his limousine driver, Costas Christofi, while showing off a shotgun at his mansion in New Jersey. 
Hold up, this is unbelievable. Williams initially tried to cover up the incident by wiping his fingerprints off the gun and asking his guests to lie to the police. He was later charged with manslaughter and tampering with evidence and served 18 months in prison. Another one hit the NFL in 2004 as it was quite hilarious in a way. It happened when a brawl erupted between the Indiana Pacers and the Detroit Pistons and their fans at the Palace of Auburn Hills in Michigan. The melee, known as the Malice at the Palace, was triggered by a fan throwing a cup of beer at Pacers forward Ron Artest, who then charged into the stands and attacked the fan. Several other players and fans joined the fight, which spilled onto the court and lasted for several minutes. Nine players were suspended for a total of 146 games, and five fans were criminally charged and banned from attending Pistons games for life. Wow, what a cute little sentence there but almost not as cute as angry fans getting worked up and beating another because their team lost the game. This happened in 2011, when San Francisco Giants fan Brian Stowe was brutally beaten by two Los Angeles Dodgers fans in the parking lot of Dodger Stadium after the opening day game. Stowe, a paramedic and father of two, suffered severe brain damage and was in a coma for nine months. He still requires around-the-clock care and has permanent disabilities. The attackers, Luis Sanchez and Marvin Norwood, pleaded guilty to mayhem and assault and were sentenced to eight and four years in prison, respectively. Talking about long sentences, in 2007, Washington Redskins safety Sean Taylor was shot and killed by intruders who broke into his home in Miami at night. Taylor, who was at home with his girlfriend and their 18-month-old daughter, confronted the burglars and was shot in the leg, severing his femoral artery. He died the next day at the hospital. Four men were arrested and convicted of murder, burglary, and armed robbery, and received sentences ranging from 18 years to life in prison. Aimless shootings have often been a recurring theme in sports-related rancors, but this next guy's action, gosh, it screams pure nonchalance. In 2012, a Kansas City Chiefs linebacker, Jovan Belcher, shot and killed his girlfriend, Cassandra Perkins, at their home in front of their three-month-old daughter and his mother. He then drove to the Chiefs' practice facility and shot himself in the head in front of his coach and general manager. The motive for the murder-suicide remains unclear, but some reports suggested that Belcher and Perkins had a troubled relationship and that he was suffering from chronic traumatic encephalopathy, CTE, a degenerative brain disease caused by repeated head trauma. That was the same way former New England Patriots tight end Aaron Hernandez was arrested and charged in 2013 for the murder of Odin Lloyd, a semi-professional football player who was dating the sister of Hernandez's fiancé. He was also indicted for the 2012 double homicide of Daniel De Abreu and Safiro Furtado, who were shot and killed in a drive-by shooting after leaving a Boston nightclub. Hernandez was found guilty of first-degree murder in Lloyd's case and sentenced to life in prison without parole. He was acquitted of the double homicide charges but committed suicide in his cell five days later. A post-mortem examination revealed that he had advanced CTE. Yeah, quite alarming, right? But this wouldn't be the only time fellow sportsmen fought over a chick. In 2016, former NFL player Will Smith was shot and killed by Cardell Hayes, a former semi-pro football player, after a road rage incident in New Orleans. Smith and his wife Raquel were driving home from a dinner when they were rear-ended by Hayes' vehicle. The two men exchanged words and Hayes shot Smith eight times, killing him and injuring his wife. Hayes claimed that he acted in self-defense, but was convicted of manslaughter and attempted manslaughter and sentenced to 25 years in prison. But the more recent and shocking one was in 2019, when former MLB pitcher Tyler Skaggs was found dead in his hotel room in Texas. He and his teammates were staying for a series against the Texas Rangers. An autopsy revealed that he had died of an accidental overdose of fentanyl, oxycodone, and alcohol. The investigation also revealed that Skaggs had been supplied with opioids by Eric Kay, the Angels' director of communications, who was later charged with conspiracy to distribute a controlled substance resulting in death and faces up to 20 years in prison. These are just some of the tragic examples of how shooting and violence have marred the world of sports in the U.S. They show that no one's immune from the threat of gun violence, whether they are athletes, fans, or innocent bystanders. They also raise questions about the causes and solutions of this pervasive problem, which affects not only the sports community, but the entire society. These shootings have raised questions about the security and safety of sports events, as well as the broader issue of gun violence in the U.S. Some have called for stricter gun control laws and background checks, while others have argued for more mental health services and education. Some have also suggested that sports fans should be more responsible and respectful when celebrating their team's victory and avoid engaging in violence or vandalism. How do you think we can prevent such tragedies from happening again? 
Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching. See you next time.